Welcome to another episode of The Fast Lane with Stevie Fast Jackson. We're inside the shop today and we're going to talk mechanical fuel injection. We've got a number of questions that have been submitted to our YouTube channel about mechanical fuel injection, how it works, how it doesn't, how does it make the car run better or worse. So today we're going to dive right in and I'm going to show you the ins and outs of the quickest screw blown radial tire car in the world and the meaning of the phrase, when in doubt, lean it out. In its most basic form, the design of any fuel injection system is very simple. It's designed to put fuel in the engine. Uh, a lot of manufacturers make it harder than that. People try to make it seem more complicated than that. But at its heart, whether it's electronic or mechanical fuel injection, its sole goal is to meter fuel that goes into the engine. And we're going to start with the absolute heart of a mechanical fuel system, the fuel pump. Now, any good blown alcohol racer probably takes his fuel pump off the race car and sleeps with it in the bed at night. Uh, there's tales of guys who will never let the fuel pump out of their sight. Um, each fuel pump has a personality. It has a, it has a fuel flow curve. And that directly um, affects how you have to put fuel in the engine and how you have to take it out to make the engine run. Uh, the way this works is very simple. Uh, it appears to be complicated, but we're going to give you a, a bench top demonstration and then I'll show you on the car how everything works. Basically, you have the fuel inlet right here. There's a hose on that that goes to the fuel tank, and that feeds um, a, a volume of fuel to the fuel pump. We mount the fuel tank in front of the fuel pump for two reasons. These things don't suck fuel very well. They're made to push. So we use gravity, G-forces from the, from the car moving forward to kind of force feed fuel into the inlet. It's got gears inside. The, the width of the gears is what determines the fuel flow of the pump. The wider the gear, the more surface area, the more fuel volume that it can flow. Pressurizes the fuel, takes it from the fuel tank. This is called the outlet or the top side of the fuel pump. And what you'll see, there's a number of different configurations that you'll see here. But what's pretty common is this check valve right here called a pump loop. Now, a lot of guys uh, will take this pump loop and then they'll put the outlet in the bottom of the, of the fuel pump like we do. Uh, there's a lot of guys that put it directly back in the tank. It's just a matter of how you like to slice your pie up. There's a jet in here, and then there's a pressure spring right here. And at a certain pressure, preset by the tuner or the crew chief, this opens up through an orifice, uh, what we call a jet. It's an interly main jet. And it allows the fuel pump to flow fuel from the pressurized side back to the inlet. And what this does is this is your initial stage of sizing the fuel pump. The bigger this orifice right here, the bigger the leak is going back to the tank. And you're going to hear me talk about leaks a bunch. It, at the heart of its design, a mechanical fuel injection system is a series of leaks. It is a pressure pump and then a series of leaks, whether that be in the engine, back to the tank, fuel management, uh, idle check valves, um, port checks, whether you put it in the supercharger or the engine, it is a pump with a series of leaks. So after you have your pump loop, uh, typically, on a pump that's sized correctly to the engine, you'll run between a 60 jet and a 120 jet, uh, just depending on how big the fuel pump is, the, at the atmospheric conditions at the racetrack that day, and how big you need the fuel pump to be. So then on top of that, you have the outlet. Now we have a port here that we measure port pressure. This goes to the race pack. We monitor fuel pressure in real time. We also monitor fuel pressure downstream also, but this is the initial fuel uh, pressure check. That kind of gives you an idea on the health of your pump and if there's something going on, it's gonna show you that. That'll be your first line of defense against failure. On top of that, we have an outlet. This actually feeds fuel um, to the fuel management, and when we get to the car se section, I'll show you guys, uh, teach you guys about fuel management. This is a pressure, uh, the, the, a pressure outlet that sends fuel to the fuel pressure. This is the fuel pump shutoff. This is what's mandated uh, NHRA, most eighth mile sanctioning cars run it also. There's a cable attached to this, runs inside the car to a handle. If there's a problem with the throttle being stuck open, with the car not able to shut off, we're able to simply pull a cable and shut off the fuel flow. Uh, these things make between <coughs> 14 gallons a minute, if you have like a slow car, to upwards of 25, 26 gallons a minute for a screw blown Hemi. So if you pull the fuel shut off and shut the fuel flow off of this pump when the engine's at 10,000 RPMs, it'll destroy the fuel pump. There's nowhere for the fuel to go. So fuel shut off is in one direction. It opens this port, and it simply allows it to dump fuel back to the bottom of the pump 
to stop the fuel pump from deadheading pressure um, and tearing the fuel pump up. This is the fuel pump outlet. This will run through the outlet hose into a fuel filter. Now some guys run a cone on the barrel valve. Uh, we run a fuel filter. It's a 100 micron filter um, and it just catches large debris that could either be going through the pump or the pump coming apart. And then we're gonna take it to the barrel valve. We're gonna go over to the car and I'm gonna teach you guys where it goes, why we put it there, and what makes it run. All right, now on the car, the fuel pump is mounted to the front of the engine. Uh, there's a fuel pump extension there that bolts to the front of the cam drive and the fuel pump turns at one half engine RPM speed. So it turns at the speed that the camshaft rotates, which is 50% of what the crankshaft turns. The fuel pressure and flow curve is linear depending on engine RPM. The faster the engine spins, the more fuel it makes. Now we've, we've made our fuel pressure, we have pumped our fuel from our tank, we've came out of our fuel pump, we've went through our fuel filter, and now we're to the barrel valve. Now what this does, this is mounted to the bottom of the injector, Several different configurations. You'll see it on a roots blower, it's lower, on a screw charger, it's higher, sometimes it's further back. And the simplest way to think about a barrel valve is that it's basically an on or off valve. You have your fuel flow coming into the front of it. There's a, a V cut in it that allows fuel to leak back to the idle check. The idle check then returns the fuel that is not using an idle back to the tank. And this is the outlet of the barrel valve. When the driver slams the throttle, this opens up and just completely opens up a hose that goes uh, to, the, to the flow meter. Now this is not a, uh, I'm half throttle, this is half the amount of fuel. It's pretty much on or off. Uh, if you drive one of these cars and you have three quarter throttle going on the track and you hold three quarter throttle, you're probably gonna tear the engine up because you will not have the barrel valve all the way open. Oh! Big explosion! You okay down there, Jack? I'm good. I'm good. All right, here's your standard Interly barrel valve uh, that you'll find on the majority of your mechanically injected supercharged cars. It most typically is mounted to the driver's side of the injector, bolts to the in bottom of the injector right there. It's got an arm that goes from there to the throttle uh, arm that goes through the injector that's activated by a cable uh, that's hooked to the driver's foot. This thing's pretty simple in design. Uh, you have an inlet right there. There's fuel pump in from the fuel pump. Here's your return. This goes back to the tank. Uh, this is where you'd run a pump saver, uh, a pop it to where you, when you close the throttle, uh, it allows it to bypass fuel. Uh, here's your high speed lean out if you want to do a mechanical high speed lean out on pressure. And this goes out to your uh, port check, to your supercharger, this is your fuel out of your bear valve. So pretty simple design. Um, as you can see through here, through the fuel inlet, um, there is a small V that's cut um, in the middle of the barrel valve. That is actually the fuel uh, that the engine idles on and what will happen is you will adjust that you'll make it longer to feed the engine more fuel You'll um, close that linkage to, to deny it fuel at idle and then when a driver stomps his foot uh, down on the throttle It will uh, basically just open uh, And that's what we mean when we say that it's a one-way valve um, Here you have uh, idle fuel This is wide open and it feeds fuel out to the back and you'll see what I mean. If you were to close the throttle a little bit, if you didn't have your foot on the floor, you're closing off the fuel um, that the engine is using and that's detrimental to the engine. Uh, right here, when you hear me talking about main jets, this is where the main jet goes. And what that is, is that's just a jet um, that we put in that this is the kind of the last tuning decision that the crew chief uses. Screw that all the way in and put the cap on. And that is a controlled leak that goes to the return passage uh, that leaks back to the tank. And that's your Stevie Fast Jackson School on barrel valves. One pair and up. Let's take a 96 in the main, 96.
came out of the United States, but Hey, make your jokes. Ha 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 ha. Make your jokes. Funny, funny. Hey, is this? I can't tell what this is. Way to go there, Einstein. Can you tell you dropped it on the ground? Yeah, make sure that rock that's in there is not in there. I'm gonna need all that to work. I didn't drop the jet. Don't double stack the jet. Make love to the jet. Don't knock the threads off the jet. Hook the spring back up. Red light. Don't hit the wall. You know. Well, talk about bringing up stuff that you got no control over. <laughs> Californian, them boys. That's just the Californian, and we can't help it. Other side of the wall for you. Might as well go get a whole pack of freaking peanuts and just eat them in the pits. Just knock the shells all over the place. Now, if you've paid attention on the starting line at any national event and you've seen a crew chief of a blown alcohol racing engine like the Shadow 2.0, you'll normally see him or her carrying around one of these. This is called a main jet tool. Um, some of us have emotional attachment to our main jet tool. Uh, Billy Stockland has been carrying the same main jet, main jet tool to the starting line for 20 years. And if you try to take that main jet tool from him, he will chase after you um, in, in a fashion that you would not believe. Uh, this thing holds uh, six to eight main jets, depending on the tool. And what we do is when we calculate weather for the run, we size a couple of thousandths of main jet below what we think we're going to run, a couple of thousandths above, and then you're depending on how the weather changes in the staging lane to select your main jet. And when you hear me talking about the pump loop jet or the main jet or fuel management jets, what that is is that's a brass jet. It's sized in thousandths of an inch. And it's uh, not simply just a, just a piece of brass with a hole drilled in it. These are actually flowed on a flow bench. There's reamed and unreamed jets, and each jet is flowed to be uh, a precise amount of fuel volume to make sure that a 78 jet is a 78 jet. The worst thing that could happen is for you to be in between jets, say your weather station is calling for a 78, and you go put a 78 in it, and that thing really is a 90. Okay, well, not only do you get to smoke the tires, probably not even get far enough to tear the engine up, but if it does absolute, ac accidentally make it far enough to, tear the, uh, to not smoke the tires, it's going to tear the engine up. The engine's going to be too lean. So when we talk about jets, when you hear me talking about put the big jet in it, put the big lean out in it, this is what we're talking about. This is fuel system jets. We leave the barrel valve. We go to one of the most important components of the mechanical fuel injection system, the fuel flow meter. Now, this is hooked to the data acquisition system in the car. We monitor this channel at 100 frames a second, and this measures how many gallons per minute of fuel flow uh, that the engine is consuming. Fuel leaves the barrel valve, and from here on, it's pretty wide open to uh, the crew chief on how this is plumbed. There's no right way or wrong way. Uh, Root's uh, blown application has far more plumbing. The screw charger is pretty simple. On ours, we just have four nozzles in the supercharger, uh, one in each side on the front, one on each side right behind that. We pick up fuel flow through a T right here, and there is a jet in each one of these nozzles for a total of four nozzles in the supercharger. And the engine actually idles on the fuel that goes in the top of the supercharger until it reaches a certain pressure that's determined by RPM that opens a check valve that allows it to, to turn the check valve on to flow to the port fuel nozzles. Now you have a nozzle in each cylinder port in the intake manifold each one of those has a jet or a flowed orifice, uh, similar to the main jet. Um, and that's how we size fuel flow for each cylinder. Um, you would think that on any engine you could just stagger and even up the fuel from the front to the back. That's far from the truth. When the, when the fuel comes in the top of the supercharger, supercharger uses fuel to lubricate it as well as cool the incoming air. Uh, and the, the supercharger distributes that fuel uh, into different places in the manifold. So it's not uncommon to have um, a wildly different jet spread from the front of the engine to the back. Uh, everybody kind of has a standard rule. My rule is 10%. If I get to where I have over 10% of fuel distribution from the front to the back, I fix it mechanically. It's gonna get a shorter connecting rod. It's gonna get more or less compression, different piston, something to do with the engine to stop me from having to make such wide fuel system changes. Fuel leaves the, uh, 
the distribution block where it goes to the supercharger, goes to the port check. All right, you put it on the two-step. That port check is generally just above two-step RPM or at two-step RPM. That port check opens, and now we're feeding fuel to the four nozzles in the supercharger and the eight nozzles in the port. Some people use two sets of nozzles in the port. Some cylinders are difficult, and you'll end up with two nozzles in one port. But the theory is the same. It's all a controlled series of leaks going into the engine and the supercharger. Okay, so you're going down the racetrack. The engine's at 10,000 RPMs. The fuel pump is making 25 gallons an hour of fuel, 25 gallons a minute of fuel. Uh, what do you do with it? What do you do when you need to lean the engine out, when you need to accelerate the car? Uh, the way we do that is we have a controlled leak that makes the fuel pump smaller that goes back to the fuel tank. And we're gonna talk now about leaning the engine out and fuel management. Okay, so we've got our fuel supply line that goes to the fuel management here. It feeds fuel directly off the fuel pump into the fuel management block. We run a combo flow uh, fuel management. There's all different types. Uh, we run a timer inside the car that actuates air to a, to a combo flow AR6 air valve. This puts air through here and it basically opens each one of these solenoids at a certain time and point on the racetrack. And then inside, each one of these caps is a jet. Uh, it uses the same style jet uh, as the main jet. And you basically pick how big, a, we call it a lean out, how big or small of a lean out you want to put in there, screw it in and put the cap back on. These turn on some of them on RPM, some of them on time. And these are determined uh, by the crew chief as the size of the orifice gets bigger, you leak more fuel back to the tank. This is the outlet. This goes through a return flow meter along with the idle check, and this goes into the fuel tank. So not only do we monitor fuel in gallons per minute up top so we know how much the engine's using, we also manage, uh, monitor fuel flow, the return fuel flow meter, to know how much is coming back through the idle check and how much fuel management fuel that we're returning to the tank. This tells you if you begin to have a problem, if you go out there and burn the engine up, or you do something silly to it, this will tell you that, oh, I meant to put an 86, I meant to put a 68 in this management jet instead of an 86. The engine's two gallons too lean and it tore up. I'm wondering if the first quarter of a second of the tune up is too aggressive. And then I'm wondering from 0.85 to 0.92, where I'm ramming it all the way in there with a Bermuda Triangle, if it's, if I got enough weight on the nose. And also wondering if at 3.4, if it's still gonna be running. All of that. The two-edged sword of tuning and driving. Hardest thing to do in the race car is to turn your brain off because I know every single thing that's running, everything, how it works, and question every decision the whole time. When you fire that motor up, you gotta quit tuning and start driving. tuning in to an episode of the Fast Lane with Stevie Fast. I hope you've enjoyed our very brief explanation on mechanical fuel injection systems. If you guys have a topic that you would like us to cover, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and comment with the hashtag Fast Lane, and we'll dive into some of your questions that you have about our motorsports industry. Thanks for watching.